Good morning, folks. Today we'll see a filament rip away from the sun, check in on the mega cloud line, a volcano, and deep space science news. Let's begin over at spaceweathernews.com and find the last 24 hours on our star appear relatively calm. No sunspots, just a large coronal hole turning through towards the western limb. We did have an eruption near the south polar crown. A mid-sized filament ripped itself out of the corona and headed even a bit more southward. It's an aesthetic moment as the CME is not going to be heading this way. Let's go next to the solar wind. We see decreased stream intensity yet again, and the minor cosmic ray health alert sent through the disaster prediction app yesterday is building as the low KP event continues. The other alert that came through was for increased seismic risk, and it's due to this coronal hole. It appears the sun-to-earth alignment in the interplanetary magnetic fields is showing this morning in the solar wind. It's an earthquake watch. Let's check in on Etna. Italy's most actively gorgeous mountain began a small eruptive phase here. Just as long as Campi Flegri stays quiet, we'll enjoy the show. As the torrential rains hitting the west coast begin to break records, know that another storm will run down that coast starting tonight, and you'll see major storm alerts in our ending wind maps through the eastern part of the country too. But here, please note once again the North Atlantic system and its cloud line reaching back across the continent. At its peak yesterday, it stretched more than 8,000 miles, nearly to Oceania. This morning, it does break south of Hawaii, about 1,000 miles shorter. Let's go to the science. We're starting with globular clusters, massive spherical clusters of stars that move as a tight family group around larger active galactic nuclei, a mini dwarf satellite in its own right. Well, now Hubble has wide mapped the skies looking just for these globular clusters, which can actually show themselves in light profile as well as the galaxies themselves. And when you take a look at the normal view of the heavens, let's go ahead and add the globular clusters in there. That is a bit more than expected. And folks, while the rotational dynamics of galaxies and the structural character of the cosmic web both require high focus on electromagnetic forces, plasma current instabilities, and turbulence, these globular clusters truly do fit the bill as the gravitationally attracted groups of stars in the cosmos. Up next, the history of light across the universe. By ignoring existing starlight and instead focusing on the X-ray and gamma emission of the background, they are able to gather information about not only existing stars, but those that have disappeared through time. By determining how much gamma signature has photon collision along the way to produce electrons and positrons, they are able to determine the forest through which this light reaches us and have been able to confirm star formation rates in the early cosmos. This is a wholly independent and separate type of analysis confirming those rates, all from looking at the light lingering long after their makers have retired. I'll leave you with an article recommendation on the stagnation in physics. As bad as it might seem to those of you listening here daily, wait until you get a physicist insider's take on the catastrophe. The cosmology is something we'll address here at the conference in a couple of months, along with climate change. It's been five years since I took a big swing in presentation form, but in preparing the slides yesterday, I realized the data demands recognition of error in the entirety of climate change science, every last piece of that 97% consensus. We've got your wind maps, followed by shots of our star to close. We'll do this all again tomorrow, right here, but right now it's 4.05 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open, no fear. Be safe, everyone.